So let's take a look at another group that evolved uh, during the Mesozoic, definitely in the Triassic, and that's going to be mammals. Um, so as we saw in the Paleozoic, we have our mammal-like reptiles that evolved, but by the time we get to the Triassic, we definitely have some real true uh, mammals. And they're definitely very small, right, as you can see, kind of mouse-sized, right, even looking kind of like a mouse there. Um, so remember, um, mammals are easy to identify because they are warm-blooded. Um, they definitely have hair or fur. And the females have active mammary glands um, that secrete milk, right, to feed babies. Um, and we can divide up our mammals, our living mammals, into two groups. We have monotremes uh, and theria. Monotremes lay eggs, right, and we'll take a look more uh, at some modern uh, monotremes when we get to the Cenozoic. Um, but modern ones, right, would be like the duck platypus. Um, Therias are true mammals, and we have two different types. We have marsupials, right, which carry their young in a pouch, like a kangaroo. Um, so part of their life cycle is spent, right, developing in that pouch. Not their whole life cycle, but part of it. And then placentals, and that's what we are, right, we retain our young within the body. Now, when we find mammals out in the field, I know there's a lot of information here, uh, when we find mammals out in the field, they're small. So nine times out of ten, we don't find the whole skeleton. We just find the hardest part of the skeleton, and that's going to be their teeth. Uh, mammal teeth are quite abundant uh, in the fossil record, definitely much more so than full skeletons. So uh, what we've done, right, is we have categorized mammal teeth um, based on the, the different types of cusps that you can see. Um, so these seven different groups uh, are just the groups based on those different tooth structures. Um, but like I said, we don't really get a whole lot of mammal skeletons until a little bit later on, but teeth... They're pretty, not easy to find, but they're definitely there. Uh, we definitely see uh, plants, right, obviously still around, and they're definitely important as they're, they're working their way up on the land and really getting established. Because remember, this is the base of the food chain, so very important. Um, remember, they also change the amount of carbon dioxide and ox oxygen in the atmosphere, uh, which affects the climate, like we saw way back with Rodinia. Um, plants are also important because they hold the ground in place and slow down erosion, uh, which is definitely important to us right here in coastal Louisiana. Uh, but we see three major uh, advancements of land plants. As we saw in the Paleozoic, we have our seedless spore-bearing plants, which come around first, then our non-flowering seed plants that come around next, and then we're going to see our flowering plants uh, come around in the Mesozoic as well. Um, so the early Mesozoic was dominated, again, by plants that did not have flowers. So we're going to have true ferns, uh, which remember are spore bearers, and our seed ferns, um, which are definitely, they took a pretty hard hit at the end of the Permian, but they're still around. And um, our lycopods, which remember those are their scale trees, those really tall but really skinny trees. Um, so they're, they're definitely around. And our gymnosperms are very dominant um, throughout the Triassic and Jurassic. Now I bring your eye to this guy, the cycads. Uh, living in Louisiana, especially around New Orleans, you might see cycads all over the place. A lot of people think that these are palm trees, uh, but in fact they are not palm trees. Um, cycads have been around for a long time, right, since the Mesozoic, since the Triassic. Um, and they make great fossils. Um, this base here is really hardy and heavy. And as you can see, it leaves behind some pretty, pretty amazing fossils. So we'll uh, take a break there and come pick up with the Jurassic time period in the next video.